the next film is one that I might have spoken about earlier, uh, but only briefly and in passing. 1960. This is a Japanese film, and this is a film by a filmmaker who perhaps doesn't get a lot of attention that he deserves uh, because he seems to be overshadowed by the other so-called great masters of Japanese cinema, Kurosawa, Ozu, Mizoguchi. And, uh, but uh, Naruse, Mikio Naruse, is a filmmaker that I think should be mentioned. Uh, and I think that for my money, uh, Mikio Naruse uh, could be a contender for perhaps uh, the greatest uh, Japanese director of the 20th century. Uh, but that's a discussion for another time, of course. But uh, the film that I have here is a Criterion DVD. And it's called When a Woman Ascends the Stairs, 1960. And this has um, the breathtaking performance by the, uh, the main actress here, so Hideko Takamine. Her performance here is amongst the most gut-wrenching, most dignified. It's filled with purpose. It is filled with solemnity. It is a smart, intelligent performance. Uh, and yet it is uh, uh, just attacked on all sides by the sadness that is the reality of her situation. And does she crumble? Does she does she uh, 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 crawl up into a little ball? No, everything is... is, is, is um, uh, she's filled with uh, a great um, uh, self-respect, self-dignity, and yet uh, there is much disappointment and there is much uh, unhappiness that occurs. And this is a film that thus becomes such an emotionally charged film. And it is a uh, um, it is a film right about. Uh, uh, treachery and deception, but uh, it's not in the sort of uh, 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 kind of malicious way that you have heroes and villains in a film. No, it's the kind of treachery and deception that just comes about uh, just within the span of, of uh, the the workings of uh, everyday human relationships. And because of that, I think it makes the drama all the more powerful, and it makes. Um, uh, uh, Takamine's performance here uh, so much more uh, dignified and filled with dare I say it grace of, um, of a character that is a, 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 a strong-willed one and yet one that is an, uh, gosh. Gosh. how should I put it um, one that is uh, not, well, how should I put it? She doesn't, um, she's, she's smart enough to know what her situation is, let me put it that way. And yet she is uh, still, um, uh, you know, she, it, it's not like she doesn't give up, but it's, there's, a, there's a kind of uh, resignation to uh, her life situation that occurs. And it's, it's truly um, uh, uh, beautiful and devastating and uh, uh, lovely. And we see how she deals with this stuff and how she tries to uh, change her situation. And that's the, the, the trajectory of the film. So if you have not seen this film yet, I strongly urge that you do because it is, a, um, it is an incredibly uh, a moving, moving portrait of this character. So when a woman ascends the stairs. Uh, this is a film from 1969, and I might have spoken about this very briefly, but uh, let me just talk about it again, because I, again, I have thought about this very hard, and this is not, again, my top 10 moving films list ever, so uh, please don't uh, misinterpret it, uh, what I'm saying here, but it is a, a, a group of films that I think are very moving for one reason or another, and as I say, uh, what 
constitutes a moving experience, I think, depends on the person. So, um, and I think it's a very interesting thing to think about, and it it uh, it just shows what kind of person uh, maybe I am, or shows what kind of person you are if you're sharing that same kind of information. And so, I think if there's um, if there are different films on the list, I think that's just an indication of the kind of uh, 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 maybe the, the kind of person you are, the kind of person I am. And so I put this particular list here, again, not to try to be sensational about this. Uh, again, I really thought about this. And I think this is another film that maybe people might think, hmm, why is this film being discussed here? But I have a reason for it, and it's this. It's called um, On Her Majesty's Secret Service. The film is, a, is an action-adventure film. And it's based on a novel by Ian Fleming, and it stars um, uh, uh, George Lazenby and Diana Rigg. And it's uh, from 1969 and directed by Peter Hunt. And it's on its surface, it's a just a, a, an action adventure film. And I think it's it, it's not so. Uh, it, it, well, it's a very exciting action adventure film. There are many stunts. There's a lot of chase scenes. There's a, a villain. There's a hero. There's a, a, a bad guy layer. There's this weird outlandish plot that involves uh, uh, beautiful women and uh, guns and, and ski chases and all, and all that and car chases. And it's very exciting, very exciting stuff. It's great, great action th adventure film. And also at its core, I think there's a very uh, tender romance uh, between the main characters. And so uh, this is, uh, I think, at the heart of this film. And it's not the most uh, profoundly moving experience in terms of, uh, you know, the great, it's not one of the great movie romances, I would say. Um, uh, but that, I, don't mean, I don't mean that to demean the film. Um, uh, because I still think that the romance here is is very tender and it's very um, uh, it's very uh, uh, it's 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 lovely in its um, in its kind of uh, for lack of a better word purity um, and when I say purity I mean there's just a, a, a pureness and earnestness between the characters that is so lovely it's like we see these characters and when they're together they're like um, they're they're like these uh, two lovebirds. Uh, that were that were uh, maybe high school sweethearts or something, and so it's lovely to see them interact, and and therefore the action is is thus built around them, and so it's it's really wonderful, and then to see this relationship play out the way it does um, uh, throughout the film is, it is still to this day uh, one of those things that never fails. It never fails to move me, and. Um, it does so because I think it's it, it, it it's a it's one of those um, uh, progressions of uh, an emotional plot, an emotional feeling, or an emotional arc. It's one of those progressions that seems so it, like when you're watching it, you you kind of feel like you know where it's going. But it there comes a moment in the film, and I don't want to spoil it, but there comes a moment in the film where I think it it almost. It, it, everything is is left behind. In other words, the moment seems to transcend everything about the film. So if you thought the film was this sort of simple action-adventure film filmed with lots of stunts and gorgeous women and stuff, that's great. That's wonderful. It, it, it works on that level as a great entertainment. But then there's a moment that everything seems to uh, transcend and it, it becomes something much more. And if you've seen the film, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about, that this particular moment. And, and when it, it arrives, and when you realize what's happening you know, on screen, you realize that something profoundly uh, moving is, is occurring. And uh, I think it's that motion, uh, that, that trajectory that I feel from point A to point B, uh, is why I think this film, for me, is uh, incredibly, incredibly moving. Um, it's a film that when I watch, I don't expect to be moved, but when I, I go through with it and then after it's over and I think back and I sit back and I think about it, yes, it has moved me quite profoundly. Again, it is something that I think is unexpected, um, but again, when it comes, everything 
is transcended and it becomes something much more than what it had played out uh, throughout most of its running time. So therefore, I think this film, On Her Majesty's Secret Service, is one of the most moving experiences, one of the more moving experiences that I've, I've come across in my, uh, my film viewing life. So there you go, 1969. Okay, so the next film I want to talk about is, um, this is a film from 1971. And again, some people might think that this is a, maybe an odd choice to talk about in terms of a moving film. But I'm thinking about it, again, in my own way. And I'm talking here about the investment that I underwent in terms of my emotional investment to the characters, and in particular one character in this film that I'm about to put up. It is the film from 1971. It is called The Devils. The Devils is a, uh, it is a unique viewing experience. It is a film that I think should be seen by as many people as possible. And when you, if you have not seen it yet, uh, please be warned that it is very intense, but it is not intense in the way that I think its reputation uh, makes it out to be. I think it's intense on a more, um, on, a, on a much more, uh, uh, kind of a, a raw emotional level. And thus, when I say it is an intense film, I think it is a masterfully intense film. And as all, I think, great films uh, have the potential of being, you know, the, all the great films, right, are, have an intensity of, of one degree or another. And so I think The Devils has that same uh, school of, of thought in terms of its intensity. The reason why I think it's so moving for me is because the kind of emotional investment that I make with the main character of the film, uh, Father Grandier, played by Oliver Reed, because his character, you know, Father Grandier is not the, he's not infallible. He is imperfect in many ways. He is uh, very human in that respect because uh, you know he has a certain uh, certain weaknesses that are uh, 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 that are obvious to us the viewers from almost the very beginning and yet and yet or despite or whatever or perhaps it doesn't even matter right uh, it's a really interesting thing because right he is presented as infallible or he's presented as, as not infallible. he's presented as fallible right he's presented as having certain uh, weaknesses or weaknesses shall we say um, but those are just traits of being human, right? And amongst that, amongst that depiction, he is also shown to have an incredible amount of grace and dignity and of uh, this idea of worth and self-worth. And he really values this. And his character, therefore, is one of the, I think, one of the greatest characters in late 20th century cinema. Uh, one of the great heroes of, of uh, British cinema, for sure. Um, and his, uh, his efforts in this film, as the film progresses and as the various plot lines uh, progress in a way that, is, um, uh, uh, that ends up becoming potentially quite uh, tumultuous, his uh, way of, of handling this situation is uh, just a, it's a great affirmation of, um, of this kind of uh, belief system that he seems to be instilled with. And it's a great affirmation of this, this idea of, uh, right, um, um, the beauty of a kind of belief in, uh, by someone who is admittedly uh, not a perfect person. And it's that uh, strength of belief that carries him through. And it carries him through uh, through the events of the film and it leads eventually to what happens at the end and then everything uh, is completed and then the film is over. And therefore, um, his journey and um, the way that 
the world treats him in this film and the way that he responds to that treatment is, oh gosh, it is um, so powerful and uh, incredibly inspiring. Uh, in some levels, it's quite horrifying, um, very scary. I used the word intense before. Um, uh, sometimes quite, uh, uh, it, it's quite cringe-inducing, I must admit, and there are moments where I have to look away even, but uh, through all of that, through all of that, through this idea, this, what's the word, struggle, perhaps, we see what it is that this guy, Father Grandier, is all about, and oh boy, oh boy, what a character he is. And his efforts, and his struggle, and his um, his his stubbornness, if you will, is at the heart of why this film is so so moving. The Devils, The Devils, is such an important work uh, in many ways, but I think um, uh, in in a very uh, uh, important way. It's it's important because uh, Oliver Reed's performance here of this character, Father Grandier, is one of a kind, um, incredibly moving film, The Devils. Um, the next film is one that I, it's by a filmmaker that, again, I haven't spoken about on this channel yet, and it's a real shame because I think I'm such a big fan of uh, this particular filmmaker, and I think I could have chosen any other uh, one of his films from um, uh, the films that I have because a number of films are in the Criterion Collection and there are other non-Criterion Collection releases that uh, have been made with English language support. I think many of you perhaps know this particular filmmaker um, already, but the filmmaker is Kenji Mizoguchi. And the film that I want to speak to you about in terms of a moving film experience is this film, Sancho the Bailiff. Now Sancho the Bailiff is 1954 and it is a kind of period piece, uh, Jidai Geki, which is uh, the, the phrase. And so it is, um, in that sense, it, it, it could be seen as being very distant from uh, one's own uh, environs now, and certainly from my own, because I don't live in that time period anymore. Um, but uh, I think uh, with that uh, Jidai Geki setting, we get here uh, something that can be akin to, or perhaps the uh, cinematic, uh, one of the great cinematic expressions of something which I would dare call um, dignity in suffering. Dignity in suffering. And my goodness, um, you know, this is a, what, what's the phrase? Um, you know, what is, this isn't a one hanky affair or two hanky affair or three hanky affair. This is a 300 hanky affair. Um, if you are uh, new to this particular film, it is a film that is very uh, intense and there are certain events that occur that will anger you, <laughs> that will really rile you up because of the sense of injustice that occurs, the sense of unfairness in the world and the sense of, of suffering of people who, are, uh, who don't deserve it and just trying to figure out a way out of this madness. And this is the film. And so we see various characters trying to deal with their, uh, their lot in life and uh, trying to go through uh, this idea of, of trying to find some kind of resolution to this otherwise incredibly unfair set of circumstances that befalls them. And uh, this, uh, in the face of that, we get this idea of dignity of suffering. And now there's some characters in the film that deal with this idea of suffering and they're in the world in one way. And then there are other characters that deal with it in another way. Uh, they try to fight it, but the others are perhaps more uh, resigned to their fate, so to speak. And so different choices are made and those choices seem to uh, echo out throughout the film in a way that is both haunting and uh, quite chilling uh, in many respects. And the therefore, uh, it's basically a struggle, really, of, of 
of trying to uh, unite a family. It's just trying, you're just trying to, it's a film about um, trying to find one's family. So uh, it's a film that is a Jidai Geki, but it's at its core a story that is so relatable because it's basically about the bonds between family. And so I think that's something that it, many people, at least, at least I can perhaps relate to. Uh, it's so it, it it gives me the opportunity to enter the world and to, to connect directly with the film, and then as the events of the film unfold, in a way that perhaps might be in some levels very heroic, other levels very tragic and very um, shocking, uh, and then it, it reaches its uh, sort of uh, final act in its coda, and then it ends. Uh, you, I'm left with nothing but uh, spent feeling. Uh, I feel like my soul has been ground, crushed to powder, and just left to blow in the wind. Um, and I'm uh, bereft of of, of uh, feeling, uh, and I'm felt. I feel numb. Uh, my fingers uh, don't feel anything, uh, even if I touch things, because I feel like it, everything is is has been uh, just spent from my body, and so. Um, uh, the, the 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 way that I feel at the end of this film, it's it's like um, uh, it's like a seismic shift in uh, in emotional core. You know? So uh, the the Sancho the Bailiff is uh, for my money um, one of the most profoundly moving film experiences you will ever come across again. This is one of the most profoundly moving experiences. It is a film that uh, has never left me, and I don't think it ever will. Um, it is a, it is dark. It is also very life affirming, and uh, so yes, uh, Sancho the Bailiff, uh, Mizoguchi. This is one of the most profoundly moving films ever. This next one is a an animation film. And this is from the, uh, uh, this is a Japanese film again, and this is uh, the film called Only Yesterday. Uh, Omoide Poroporo, so Omo Only Yesterday. And this is by uh, the director Takata Isao. And it is a film essentially about looking back on one's childhood and trying to uh, sift through one's memories as one is trying to deal with present-day circumstances of uh, trying to deal with uh, what you know, uh, trying to realize uh, uh, what one is or who um, who you are in this world, and it's it's a very simple story in that respect. Um, but there is so much interplay between past and present uh, in in this. Uh, way that the main character, Taeko, is trying to essentially figure out who she is and just trying to figure out what it is that she wants in life. What is it that for her constitutes happiness? And what it was in her childhood that made her feel so alive and so happy and free and scared and sad and all those things that make us human. It's a lovely tale. And... Um, I think for me, the it, it it's a film that, of course, I don't quite identify with directly because I was not, uh, I I wasn't alive in the uh, you know nineteen sixties when the, uh, the the childhood uh, segments of the film uh, take place. You know, nineteen sixties uh, Japan, and so I don't have that direct experience. But the reason why I think it's so moving is because. Uh, it reminds me of my mother, and my mother, who uh, was uh, she was a very uh, lovely woman, and uh, uh, she's not here with us anymore. And uh, this film, whenever I see it, it always reminds me of uh, my mother because my mother was. Um, I remember seeing this with her, and she identified so much with uh, the character of Taiko. Uh, and uh, her childhood experiences mirrored a lot of what my mother remembered about her own childhood. And my mother was uh, also in a large family. She was the youngest uh, of three children in her own family, and they lived in a, a fairly well-to-do uh, part of, I think it was Tokyo. 
um, and uh, she experienced the same or similar kinds of things that uh, the young Taiko does here with respect to uh, um, watching certain um, uh, TV shows, uh, listening to certain songs, um, uh, listening to certain pieces of music at the time, and um, uh, being into uh, uh, certain things of fashion uh, and things that were uh, in uh, in vogue at the time as well. So all these little things of, of nostalgia that crept into the film were actually uh, real moments that my mother uh, later on would tell me that uh, she actually felt. Um, and so when I was watching the film with her, uh, it became a, a real uh, emotional experience for her. And then, uh, but then it became a little bit of a direct connection with me because uh, the present day story with the adult Taiko and she goes off to this place called Yamagata. Now, Yamagata is it's not exactly where um, uh, my uh, wife's family is, but uh, my wife's family is, is in the is in the north part of Japan. So it's, it's around the same area. So it's in the same vicinity. So uh, and many of the things that are spoken of in the present day. A segment are, are aspects that I think um, my mother, uh, my wife's family are very uh, knowledgeable about. So I have these two co connections uh, through my mother on the one hand and through my wife and her family on the other hand uh, with respect to the present day story and the, and the, uh, the 1960s uh, childhood story. And so I have these two ways of connecting. And so through those experiences, I find this to be very moving because um, uh, you know, it reminds me, of course, of my mother, and also it reminds me of the 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 closeness that I feel with this part of Japan through my wife's family's experience, and so, um, uh, and it also for me is therefore something that I I haven't spoken that, about this much before, but uh, you know I I I don't well how should I put it um, you know, my my experience with um, Japan is, I think, uh, one of, um, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, displacement, because I spent many years of my childhood outside of Japan, and, uh, you know, they were quite formative years, and actually I, I received my education uh, outside of Japan, and uh, so in many respects, um, you know, my family, my, my parents were Japanese, and so we lived in the U.S. and in London and stuff. But I think for, uh, for many of those years, I would always feel uh, a certain longing for uh, Japan because I was away from it. And uh, it was uh, sometimes a little bit difficult uh, living in uh, the United States and in England for certain reasons that I don't quite want to get into now. But um, it, it wasn't always... Uh, uh, you know, uh, what's the phrase? It, it wasn't all wine and roses, so to speak. There were times where it, I felt it was very difficult to grow up in certain um, uh, communities that we were in. Uh, there were many nice people, but once in a while there were probably some, maybe one or two people who perhaps weren't so nice. So it, you know, it just comes with the territory, I suppose. But uh, this is all to say, just very generally, from my point of view, watching a film like this and seeing uh, two parts of of, of my life, uh, two uh, maybe two like my wi my wife's family and my mother, you know, two aspects of my life that are very important to me and very close to me. Seeing their reaction makes me want to live that experience more, and so I think there's a lot of longing that I feel, especially when I watch this film, and that makes me um, so moved by their experience, but it also makes me realize uh, some things that I I will never be able to fully directly experience in my own life, uh, namely this idea of a of a of a, you know a, a hometown in Japan, or this idea of of going back home. You know, um, there is no there is nothing like that for me. You know, my my roots I think are pretty. Um, Maybe I think there there are they they exist in my mind and in my memory, but nothing further. So everything beyond that is is pretty much uprooted, so to speak. So, and I don't say that in any uh, attempt to try to get sympathy. Um, 
so please don't worry about it. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. There's nothing, uh, I'm, I'm very content with my life as it is. So, uh, but it's just this idea of uh, my own personal experience. I think that was stemmed from my own childhood and background that made me long for something that I think this film represents to me, which is a, a kind of a past, a, a past of Japan that my my mother experienced, and also this idea of um, of uh, of the um, uh, the rural uh, uh, kind of working class um, uh, aspect of sort of the modern day Japan that my wife's family uh, uh, was uh, very much uh, involved in. You know, they 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 also were. Um, involved in farming and and uh, uh, they have little uh, patches of farmland not great big patches but very little patches of farmland and so they understand the farmland experience so to speak so um, it is uh, this is all to say that this film presents so many aspects to me that are um, uh, so direct and yet they make me feel they make me feel um, uh, so much longing and so I find that dynamic to be very interesting, and it always exists in my heart whenever I see this film. So in fact, this film presents a very moving portrait that is, uh, I think, quite complicated for me. And so this film presents a lot of, uh, of emotional baggage uh, that uh, it never fails to uh, trigger something uh, deeply moving and touching um, for many reasons that I think um, I bring to the table whenever I see this film. So only yesterday. <sighs> so um, let me end there and just say that uh, um, what films there are that you think are moving, I think are very, they should be very personal to you and they are very maybe deeply rooted in your own experience in your own life. And I think the idea of a moving film is something that you, know, you have to think about uh, in your own mind. What, what is it that you think is moving to you? you know, there are certain things that uh, move other people and, and don't move, you know, move some people and not others. And perhaps I might be moved by um, some thing or some piece of music and yet it, it doesn't move other people. Or likewise, maybe a piece of music moves someone to tears and yet for me it's just it's a nice melody but that's it so I think the, the same is true and the same can be applied to film something that can be very moving profoundly so for one person and yet might not register anything for another but that's I think what makes film great it, it makes it so malleable and so uh, diverse and so um, uh, able to uh, uh, shift and to be all things to all people. And depending on who we are and what it is we are about, it, it, can, it can serve different functions. So that's the, the great thing about cinema. And that is why I would like, therefore, now to ask you, what are some films that you think are moving? Moving film experiences. Now, this isn't necessarily your favorite films, although it could be but I'm talking more about moving film experiences. Now you could think about it in terms of moments in films that you think are moving, or you can think about it in terms of the entire package of a film, the entire film as an overall moving experience. Please, uh, please answer the question in any way you like. I'd love to hear your thoughts and, and comments. And anyway, my friends, I hope you are well and that you are watching a lot of great, great films. And uh, yes, if you want to share with me what films you think are moving, please share them below in the comment section. I'd love to hear about it. And until we meet again, my friends, please be happy and healthy and well. And take care. Cheers. Mm -hmm.